So I got some good news on the solar system. So you know how I said I couldn't, I couldn't get the shingles to separate. So I decided to put it on the wall. Well, I kind of decided to go back up there and try again to see if I could get them separated. And guess what? I was actually able to. So it turns out you don't want to actually peel up. You just want to shove the bar in there and just keep pushing. And eventually it'll just come apart. So it's only actually the strip that glues and not the whole shingle. So once you get past that strip, the rest is easy. So I managed to get the flashing to sit right under. I didn't have to take out any nails. So it looks like this job is actually going to be much easier than I thought. So I got four of them there. They're not fastened yet. So that is the next step. So I didn't really record much of it before. So now I'm actually going to get started and actually screw them in. Now another issue I ran into last time is my stud finder. It just, it was useless. Like it wasn't I was passing it through and it wasn't actually detecting the studs, it was only detecting electrical, which there's, there's no electrical. I mean, there's a solar electrical, but it was actually off at the time, so I don't know. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put some pieces of wood between each joist. I keep calling them joists, it's actually uh, rafters, they're trusses, but rafters, yeah, I guess rafters is still what you call them. So anyway, so I'm just going to put some pieces of wood between and then bolt into that. Another issue I had with installing solar panels on the wall is that there would have been more shadows and I couldn't find light bolts that are the same ones as the PD quick mount. That's exactly the same light bolts I would have needed. I couldn't find them that big on their own. Like I looked online, I looked everywhere. I wasn't confident with the smaller ones that I got. They were maybe like, they were three inches long, which means about one inch and a half maybe would go into the stud. So I didn't, I wasn't comfortable with that. So. I'm glad I can get them to work on the roof. So I'm gonna keep going on that and we'll see how it goes.
as you can see, things went pretty well. So I managed to put the solar racking set up, uh, which is basically pieces of Unistrut. So I went with five foot lengths, so four of those, and then I put two to 10 foot lengths across, and those can be adjusted based on the clips on the solar panels. So I put them there temporarily, I kind of rough measured. When I actually go to put the solar panels up, I'll probably have to adjust them a bit. But that's what's nice about the Unistrut, it's pretty easy to adjust it as you need to. And from the rough measurements I did, the four solar panels are actually gonna fit perfectly across. Things are really looking good. The only downside is that it's rain season. It seems that at this time of year, like as soon as September hits, it's just rain, 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 it just doesn't stop. And once we get better weather, I'm gonna tackle the solar panels, which should be pretty easy. So I had to drill out the clips, and then I might have to drill them out again if, because I kind of eyeballed the holes, and then I realized after that they actually have to line up pretty well, and there's not a lot of play there, so I might have to re-drill them, it's not a big deal. So once I put the solar panels up, I'll wire them up, and I'm probably going to have to buy more wire and then I'm also going to have to buy not only wire for the solar panels themselves but also wire to go from the charge controller to the battery now I went totally overkill here but I decided to rate the whole system for 200 amps on the DC side and then I did some research and it looks like I need some zero zero gauge wire which is like really thick it's like probably like this thick like I've never actually worked with that stuff before so I might actually derate it and go to 100 amps which will give me about 1,200 watts. So that's the maximum inverter I can set up on that system. So if I go with 100 watts, then I can get away with number two wire, which is maybe like this thick. It's it's a bit more realistic to work with and cheaper. So that that's all minor details. I mean, I might even just leave it to 100 amps and might get away with it because it's a short distance. I'll see. Yeah, so another step I need to do is I need to build a cabinet where the inverter and the charger controller, junction boxes, all the wiring, like all that stuff is all going to go in one nice enclosed area. And then I've been debating on if I want to insulate that box, but I think just the R value of the wood itself is probably going to be enough because the equipment will actually generate its own heat. I work in telecommunications and we actually have equipment cabinets which are just made of metal and they sit outside, usually like lower density regions. And the equipment will literally be outside and it's fine. I mean, in winter it'll run at like maybe minus one, minus two degrees, which is probably on the low side of what you want to run equipment at. But I mean, if that equipment survives out there in the middle of the street kind of thing, I think this is going to be fine in the shed. Because the shed, even though it's not insulated, it'll probably be a couple degrees warmer in there. So I think I'll be okay. Eventually I might insulate the whole shed and then I'll have to worry about all the equipment I could just try to heat the whole thing with solar, which I don't know how realistic that is, but it's worth an experiment. At some point, I'd like to actually try living off-grid. So this is kind of an experiment to see just how viable it is to try to you know, generate solar power and all that stuff. So this is going to be a really cool pilot project once it's all done. That's really why I'm actually doing it. And for the sake of having free power. Because if ever there's a big power outage or something, I can actually charge my phone in there. I can, I can still run tools, I can charge batteries. So. It'd be kind of useful for that. So yeah, so that is pretty much it for this video. So I'll be making more videos on the next steps, which is going to be installing the solar panels and then building the box for all the electrical. I'll probably do the box first because the solar panels to install them will require a day that doesn't rain. And good luck trying to get a day that doesn't rain at this time. I mean, I'll have to wait till like December or something when it snows instead of rains. So yeah, that's it for today. Bye.